What's going on guys, Shane here. Today we're talking about the mechanics of striking, specifically the difference between elastic recoil and bone stacking to give you a better understanding of biomechanics. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's first talk about elastic recoil. Now this concept was popularized by the YouTube channel Mind Smash. Imagine you have a rubber band connecting from the top of your bicep or deltoid to your pectoral muscle. When I twist my hips and shoulders and leave my arm here, naturally it's gonna to wanna to catch up and come to the, the same path that my hips and shoulders went. Now think of it like this. We have that ballistic stretch where we pull our shoulders and arms behind us. There's never a point at which I can hold it back in its furthest position because I don't have momentum and because of the elastic recoil, it pulls my arms back to center. It's the same concept with hooks especially, right? So when I throw that hook to the head, I rotate and twist, and then I assist by pulling and whipping the arm across using that elastic recoil. Same thing with a hook to the body. I stretch and open up. Now you notice how much that bag swings when I hit it with that shot. I get a nice wind up, a lot of rotation, but now let's talk about bone stacking. I'm gonna do that same punch, but a little different. The fist is back by the elbow, the shoulder is close to the body. I'm not gonna get nearly as much of a wind up, I'm just gonna punch from here, but you'll notice the bag swings just as much, okay? <coughs> not as much of that pop or smacking motion on the bag, but that's okay. If you have a partner do these punches to you, you'll notice they both hurt, right? You get that smacking motion or the bone stacking where it kind of pierces into you. Both of them work in different situations. Okay, so practice both of them. Let's talk about the legs, the elastic recoil and the hip flexors. So if I throw a roundhouse kick, I take a step, I turn the shoulders over, and now naturally my leg wants to do this, wants to come across. So by tightening the muscles and using precision, I get a roundhouse kick. So I step, open up. Okay, so tightening the muscles is just as important. If I just bone stack, and you know, if I have a skeleton structure but no muscles, it's gonna crumble, it's gonna fall apart. Easiest way to remember this is, imagine overhead press. I'm holding a big weight, 135 pounds, I put it overhead. If I lock my arms out, I can stay here all day, right? My muscles are keeping my bones in position, but if I bend my arms and try to hold it here, I wanna be able to hold it for a couple of seconds, all right? Because arms are gonna cave, they're not locked out, biomechanics, okay? It's the same concept with all my punches. Last, I'm gonna talk about this cross now. So if I just throw a straight cross, easiest way to see it, right? I got the fist backed by the elbow, backed by the shoulder, and now all of the muscles are tightening up. I'm squeezing my forearm so I have a dense fist, and I'm even squeezing my lat upon impact to make sure that it doesn't cave this way, right? The idea of caving, it comes with slapping. If I throw a slap against this bag, my elbow can cave, my wrist can cave, and that just takes away from the power. All right, that's why when we throw our hooks, the elbow is behind the fist, and I squeeze. When you watch punches thrown in fights and they get that still image, it look, they look like they're in a muscle competition because everything's flexed, but it's just to make sure that everything is backed and staying in the same spot. When I hit my target, my opponent, I don't want them to come forward. I don't want my arm to cave. I wanna send them back, okay? So that's the idea there, is don't let anything cave. Don't go here, don't let the wrist cave, it's make sure that it's everything backed by the bones and it's reinforced by tightening the muscles. All right guys, thanks for watching. So keep this lesson in mind when you're training, but be careful that you don't get paralysis through analysis and overthink it. Sometimes you just gotta throw them hands. In a fight, it's okay to throw a haymaker or two if the situation applies. If you knock someone out, at the end of the day, it's the effectiveness that counts. You don't have to look pretty doing it. All right, so train hard, fight smart, and throw them hands. Until next time, I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the Underdogs.